Last week in a South Carolina school, there was a case where a high school girl was somehow misbehaving or not following school rules. The teacher asked her to leave. She wouldn't. Uh, the teacher called an administrator who asked her to leave and she wouldn't. And the administrator called uh, the school police officer who came in. And this officer, Mr. Ben Fields, grabbed the girl, yanked her backwards to the ground out of her desk, dragged her across the room, handcuffed her, and took her away. You should look for the video if you haven't seen it online. It's really shocking to see, and I wanted to talk a little bit about it here today. Now, the first thing is, the girl broke a school rule. And at the end of the day, she was assaulted by a police officer. Remember, she didn't break a law, but she was assaulted. So what happened was corporal punishment. When you have police officers in school, and when they go physical on students who aren't doing dangerous or physical activities themselves, you're looking at a return to corporal punishment. And Ben Fields is the example of a kind of person we don't want, we shouldn't have in our schools. Students shouldn't be scared of police officers who are in school because those police officers are supposed to be there for student safety. That's not what happened in South Carolina. A second thing that I want to address is blaming the victim. Remember, the girl was depending who you ask, either looking at her cell phone or not participating in class. And because of that, the teacher tried to throw her out, and eventually the, the uh, deputy came and assaulted her. Now, some people have said, the teacher said, the administrator said, and the sheriff said, if only the girl had done what the teacher asked, there would have been no issue. People, you're assholes. The girl didn't drag herself to the ground. Mr. Fields did that. There are a thousand ways this incident could have been resolved peacefully. The teacher could have talked to the girl after school. The administrator could have said, well, you better shape up, or maybe we'll have to give you detention. Right? If the girl had stayed home sick with a cold, then there would have been no issue. If the police officer had taken the day off to go fishing, there would have been no issue. There are a thousand ways that this situation could have resolved itself peacefully and without violence. But it ended in violence, not because of the girl's actions. The girl didn't do anything violent. The only person who got physical here was Mr. Fields. So don't blame her for his actions. Yes, she was involved, and so was everyone else in that vicinity. After all, why didn't the teacher step in and tell the sheriff, deputy, sir, it's okay, I can take care of her, you don't need to hurt her, you don't need to yank her out of her chair? The teacher could have protected his student. Actually, I'm shocked by that because I'm a teacher, and one of the things that I never want to see is students in my classroom getting hurt. I never want students to feel that my classroom or my school is unsafe. Now, maybe it's a large school. Maybe there are areas in the back behind the school where kids get in fights and there's nothing the teacher can do about it. Okay, that might be the case. But look, this is that teacher's classroom. It's his job to make sure that it's a safe learning environment. And everyone in that class for the rest of the year and the near future is going to remember this teacher's attitude. You know, if you fuck with me, if you don't follow the rules like I tell you, I'll call the police and they'll come in and they'll beat you up and arrest you. And later I'll say, hey, you should have just followed the rules. That's what the teacher has shown to his students and to the world. Now, we don't know what the teacher's like the rest of the time and we don't know what the student is, is like historically. Uh, perhaps there's some background there. I know that whatever the background, that using violence as a solution to nonviolent student disciplinary issues is no solution at all. That's inexcusable. But we can a little bit talk about other educational questions. Teachers often deal with discipline issues. Uh, I'm a teacher, right? Well, how can we deal with some of these cases that come up all the time? When a student is being disruptive, when they're breaking the rules or talking to their friends, or they bring in a can of pop when they're not supposed to have beverages in class, then you have some sort of disciplinary issue that you have to deal with. The first thing to think about is when should you deal with it? 
if you think that dealing with it now is going to lead to an escalation, like the student is going to be argumentative or is going to ignore you or try to pretend that you're not there, then you might want to wait until the end of class or close to the end of class so that the bell will ring and the other students can leave and that you can deal with the situation in a leisurely fashion. After all, if you have to spend 10 minutes in the middle of class dealing with the situation, uh, that's not a good use of classroom time. So sometimes you want to defer to the end of class. So a, a standard technique that we use when teaching is don't tell students what not to do, ask them to do what you'd like them to do. For example, when you walk into the classroom and the bell rings and students are there chatting with each other and there's nothing on their desks, you don't tell them, be quiet, be quiet, settle down, be quiet. You do tell them, get ready for class, take out your textbooks, take out your notebooks, you need a pencil, uh, you need an eraser, open your textbooks, open your notebooks, today we're on page 52. You give students specific goals things that they can do right now to get ready for whatever it is you want to do. If you tell students to stop talking and tell them to stop doing things, they don't understand why. Of course, if they pause to think about it, they might figure out why, but they're distracted. So you give them that extra help. You ask them to do what you'd like them to do, and then in the process of doing it, they'll realize, oh, we're about to start class, I'm going to study, I'm going to use this textbook. One of the things about discipline is it's never a one-time situation. If you're in the mentality of, I'm going to show this student that I'm the boss and that they're not, then even if you win that battle, you've probably lost the war. The thing is, in a classroom of 30 students, suppose one student is causing a problem, and you go and you yell at them and they be quiet. Well, 29 students witnessed that. And if they don't agree with the way you handled the situation, then you've just lost an opportunity. If you handled the situation better, maybe 29 students who watched the whole thing could say, oh yeah, I guess what the teacher is saying makes sense. I guess we need to listen a bit, bit more. And then you could avoid these situations coming up in the future. So exactly how you handle a situation matters. You're not dealing with just the one student. You're dealing with everyone else in the class. And you want everyone to be able to understand why you're taking the actions you're doing and why the behavior that you're looking for is good for the school and the student and the classroom and everyone in the class. If you use fear to get what you want, the results will not last. So suppose a student, two students, are chatting and they're not listening. And I tell them, be quiet. And they don't be quiet. And I get over there and I yell at them and I say, you know, Joe, Teresa, you better shut the fuck up right now. We're in the middle of fucking class. You will be quiet. You want suspension, motherfucker? I'll throw you the hell out of here. And I could say that to them, right? And it might work. They might do what I want and they might be scared of me. But let's think about what's going to happen. After class, they're going to go and they're going to talk to their friends. And what they're going to say to their friends is, the teacher yelled at me in class today. Or maybe they'll say, the teacher yelled at me in class because I was talking to my friend. But what they won't ever say is, the teacher yelled at me in class because I was talking to my friend. And really, you know, He's right. I mean, I, I need to be quiet and, and listen to uh, the teacher and to other students who are talking about the subject matter because otherwise I won't learn any of it and it's really important stuff that I need to learn. So what happens is that when we use fear as a weapon by looking scary or by threatening bad consequences on students, they remember all of the negative things and they forget all of the constructive words that we probably said alongside those negative things. What we want is for students to recognize how they can learn and that learning is important and why they should act in a certain way in the classroom so that they can get more out of their educational experience. But when we raise our voices or when we threaten them or especially when we bring in cops who assault them, then all of those educational objectives are gone. They're forgotten. You know, did any of you wonder in, in South Carolina, what was the class studying that day? What were they studying in math class? And what were those students supposed to learn? Did they learn it? No, they didn't learn much at all. They learned a lot about administrators and police. They learned nothing about math. and They learned even less about education. 
uh, in the United States. And like many countries, we have compulsory education up to a certain age. So this girl in South Carolina, she finished compulsory education. She did not need to be in high school. Now, that changes the teacher's responsibility. If a student doesn't want to be there, they can, of course, drop out which is bad for various reasons, but there are plenty of good things students can do if they leave high school. So, you know, dropping out is not the end of the world by any means. But if the student doesn't do anything, and if she doesn't learn, then she'll fail the class, and either she'll take it again or she won't graduate high school. And that's natural. The system is made with that in mind. So, of course we want our students to graduate, and of course we want them to learn, but Remember, it's not compulsory, it's not mandatory. Not everyone has to, and for some students it's reasonable that they won't. Maybe they should be doing other things, or, or maybe if they fail the class this semester then they'll realize, oh man, I gotta work harder if I wanna finish high school. Maybe they'll take the class again in summer school in a better environment, a smaller class, or with a different teacher who, who teaches in a, in a fashion that reaches them better, okay? But we need to keep in mind that if it's not compulsory, don't pretend that it is. So if students aren't participating, then you can just give them the grade that they earn. Well, anyway, so these are all things that teachers have to think about all the time, but we do think about them all the time. So if it sounds very daunting or super difficult or something that, that gosh, you know, making these snap decisions must be really difficult, well, of course, when you're a new teacher, yeah, this stuff is hard. And even when you've been teaching for many years, you still have to think about these things. But, but this is our job. This is what we do every day. We deal with student discipline every day. Students break the rules all the time. They don't do what I ask them. They forget homework. They start talking in class. Maybe they take out a cell phone. You know, maybe they cut class, whatever. These things happen in classes all across the world on a daily basis. And uh, most of the time, they don't end in violence. So when it does, that's a sign that something is wrong with the system, not with the student. And uh, I hope that some of the other comments that I've made on classroom discipline and control are uh, meaningful and help you understand a little bit of how teachers can deal with some situations that we commonly encounter uh, in positive and constructive ways. Thanks for listening.